After more on the issue of North Korea's nuclear program, we're now joined live uh, by Peter Crail, a research analyst for the Arms Control Association. Hello, uh, Mr. Crail. With other countries like Pakistan and Iran potentially being bigger nuclear threats, why are we so worried by the tests of an impoverished nation like North Korea? Well, I think there are three main reasons why uh, there's been a lot of concern over North Korea's actions. Uh, one just has to do with its history, uh, that uh, after joining a uh, international treaty to uh, to get rid of or forswear nuclear weapons, North Korea had uh, had essentially cheated on that on that treaty. Uh, the second is just uh, the uh, concerns about North Korea's neighbors, in particular Japan and South Korea, whom uh, North Korea has threatened several times in the past, and so there's a concern about regional instability. And and uh, then there's just the threat that North Korea plays to the uh, to global security in terms of its, uh, its potential and its history for sharing nuclear and, uh, and missile technology with other countries in the world. Despite the recent strong condemnation of the UN Security Council, North Korea still tested two more missiles on Tuesday. Why are they so unconcerned about international opinion? Well, I think in regard to some of the missiles that North Korea has been testing, uh, I, I think we do have to put that in, in context a little bit. These are, are short-range missiles that North Korea uh, tests uh, around this time each year. Uh, but I think it does send a signal that uh, North Korea isn't really concerned about this international condemnation. And they, we also have to remember that they are already a fairly isolated regime. And that, uh, that isolation, in a sense, uh, also provides uh, a, a bit of, uh, of regime security uh, as long as they have what they consider to be a deterrent from any, uh, any threats to, to overthrow the regime. You mentioned isolation. Well, sanctions imposed on North Korea seem to hurt the people more than the regime. Are there any measures at all that can work? Uh, well, it depends on what you mean by uh, by measures that, that sanctions that can work. In terms of trying to get North Korea to abandon its nuclear program, sanctions alone probably are not going to work. They haven't worked in the past. Uh, there, there can be measures that have been able to influence the regime leadership, in particular uh, some, some kinds of sanctions that uh, target uh, financial institutions that the North Korean leadership relies on in order to, uh, to import uh, the types of goods that the uh, mass Populous, um, that the population at large in North Korea can't really uh, doesn't really have access to. But uh, the sanctions as a as a strategy alone hasn't been shown to be very successful in dealing with North Korea. Mr. Krill, some U.S. experts say that North Korea is developing nuclear weapons to sell them later, possibly to Al Qaeda. Do you think that's possible? Uh, I, I think I, I wouldn't rule it out as a possibility, but I think that uh, they, the, I, I wouldn't see them as developing nuclear weapons for that particular purpose. I think first and foremost, uh, the North Korean leadership is concerned about staying in power, and they recognize that uh, uh, that, that providing uh, nuclear weapons or nuclear weapons material in particular uh, might cross a red line that would elicit a very stern reaction uh, from the United States uh, and, and its allies. I think that they're primarily developing a, uh, nuclear weapons as, uh, as what they call it, as their deterrent against uh, any attempts uh, for, for influence by, by the United States and others to undermine the regime. And in the end of the day, who has the right to, to decide who can develop nuclear weapons? Is the UN the right organization for that? Uh, well, in terms of that, uh, I, I wouldn't say that there is any organization or state that has the right to decide, uh, but there is a, uh, a global treaty that most countries, uh, pr practically all countries, and North Korea at one point had signed up to, to agree not to develop nuclear weapons. And uh, one of the key problems with North Korea is that they signed up to, to that agreement, um, but uh, then were, were found to be cheating on it by, the, uh, by international inspectors. And that uh, has, uh, has led to the situation that that has unfolded over uh, more than the past decade now. There are talks between Moscow and Washington about decreasing nuclear stockpiles. Well, is there any point uh, if a rogue state like North Korea can just develop nuclear weapons on their own? 
Well, I think certainly there there is a point to it. it uh, the, the talks between Moscow and, uh, and and Washington are critically important uh, for uh, for providing global leadership on uh, you know, what the what both presidents have recently cited as their goal of uh, of eliminating nuclear weapons altogether. And as the the two countries with by far the largest stockpiles of nuclear weapons, it, um, it you know it's a, a, in a sense the responsibility falls on, on them to start the process. And uh, while we won't see rogue regimes like North Korea uh, follow through right away, it, it certainly provides a, a framework to work towards that goal so that uh, once the stockpiles of the largest nuclear powers uh, get smaller and smaller, we can begin to, uh, to deal with nuclear disarmament uh, for the world at large. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for joining. That's Peter Crail, a research analyst for the arms control.